Oh my god, I got a fish. <laughs> Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. Welcome to Retro Bassin. As you might be able to tell by some of the hardware on the wall here, we are back at Jensen Fish and Tackle in downtown Austin, Texas. Actually made a quick stop up here to Jensen's. Had a couple things in mind. First off, had to drop off uh, some Retro Bassin hats for those guys to put on the shelf. Got that done. And secondly, I have got to pick up some gear for a little impromptu trip I'm taking this week out to San Diego, California. Uh, that is right, I got a call that I've got to head out west for work on literally like two days notice. So I immediately got online and started figuring out what kind of fishing I could do while I'm out there. And the one thing that kept coming up was a spotted bay bass. Now I've never caught a spotted bay bass, I've never seen a spotted bay bass, but it seemed like a very cool fish. For one, they're pretty plentiful in the waters around San Diego. And two, it looks like they hit a lot of bass lures. I'm talking swim baits, like these guys, crank baits, underspins, even umbrella rigs, all kinds of really bassy stuff. I remember the last time I did the like hour long walk through here, I saw some of these baits up on the rack. This is a paddle tail swim bait similar to a Mr. Twister Sassy Shad, circa 1960 or so. I am pretty sure this thing would totally catch a little spotted bay bass. Check it out. And at $1.19, if I lose some of these in that rocky terrain, not the worst thing in the world. So this looks like a pretty nice head. I would say that is about an ounce or three quarters of an ounce. Not necessarily the color that I would choose, but I see some shads with just the shad on the card as well. So we'll probably pick up a pack of these just so I can get some heads. Ten of those. And then from there I'm going to grab some different packs as well. Oh, that's nice. That's like a sort of old school shrimp tail. I think that one might work. There's a very sort of California saltwater looking color, isn't it? It's like an orange with a black back on it. All right, I'm going to put these two guys in my to-go pile. We'll keep on shopping. It's funny, but a lot of the new old stock stuff I saw on the shelf has mysteriously gone missing. So uh, whoever scooped that up, good on you. Um, I saw some other stuff somewhere in here. There were some other soft plastic baits in some trays and I'm gonna see if anything looks suitable for a spotted bay bass. In front of me here what I have is a bunch of basically just loose soft plastics. I don't know if these are Jensen made soft plastics or just ones that they got from a, a third party vendor but there is one in here that is definitely looking ooh tasty. Okay so all of these are just different kinds of little grubs. Looks like an old Coconut minnow there, doesn't it? There's a little straight tail jobber. Nice. Ooh. Little giant uh, beetle from a beetle spin. But this caught my eye. This was probably one of the first saltwater baits I ever threw. A classic four inch sassy shad. I don't know if this is actually Mr. Twister brand or not, but this is definitely the profile of a Sassy Shad. Really, this was a swim bait before swim baits were cool. What is so interesting about these baits, the way I used to fish this, I would put it on a little jig head, probably like a half ounce, and I would cast this thing for stripers and bluefish. This is definitely not your grandson's swim bait. For one, it's got a lot thinner profile. Look how thin that thing is. 
This really is meant to be fished on the bottom with a heavier lead. This thing wouldn't swim real well on like a belly weighted hook. And honestly, that keel would probably get in the way pretty hard. But on some heavier weights, just kind of casting around, jigging off the bottom, whew, that little tail gets done. So I like this color as well. That looks like a yellow and an orange back. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of these guys and bag them up for sure. Yeah, that would totally work. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe I missed this little section the first go around at Jensen's. I don't know if you guys remember a video we did a few weeks ago on the Doug English bingo bait. Well, I think I might have just found the Jensen version of the bingo. Mind blown. All right, we are back from Jensen Fish and Tackle, and this is the night before my trip to San Diego, which, as you know, means whales. Well, anyway, uh, we are getting packed up with some of the gear, and I do want to show you what we are bringing for our little trip out west. So first off, the fish that I'm going to be targeting while I'm out there is called a spotted bay bass. And to be honest, it wasn't until recently that I even knew this fish existed. So here is a picture of a spotted bay bass. And let me pull up Wikipedia and see what it has to say about this unique West Coast fish. The world record spotted bay bass was 6.7 pounds. And it was caught in 1995. It measured 23 inches. That's a pretty long bass, actually. The range of the spotted bay bass is Acapulco, Mexico, and the Gulf of California to Monterey and Central California. Oh, here's one. How do you catch a spotted bay bass? Probably not with retro gear, but we'll see. The easiest and often most productive way to fish for spotted bay bass is with a soft plastic bait. Ah, okay. There are several styles that work, a swim bait, a fluke, and a creature bait. All three of these baits can be fished on the same rod and reel combo. So maybe we are on the right path to catching some new species of fish on this little retro roadshow. So a quick rundown on what we are bringing to California. First things first, when we were in Jensen Tackle, I found probably one of the coolest old school tackle shop finds I've ever seen. And that is this, the old Jensen Fish Hound. What's funny is probably two months ago, I would have passed this bait by and not even given a second look. In fact, I might have actually passed this bait by and not given it a second look. But after spending some time with our new bassing bud, David down in Corpus Christi, the Doug English bingo lure expert, oh my goodness, this thing, is quite a find. So this is basically Jensen tackle version of the Doug English Bingo, and I bought a few of these. Now I'm not saying this is gonna be a bait that is gonna catch a spotted bay bass. I'm gonna bring two of them just in case, but I've got a feeling this is gonna be something for the next time I hit down to Louisiana, throw this bad boy under a little popping cork. What else do we get from Jensen tackle? Well, I got a pack of old school Jensen spade tail shads. And this looks like it's on a one ounce ball headed jig, probably a three inch uh, bait right there. And this is in the black. What's cool about this pack, and I'm gonna bring the whole thing with me, is I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 of these bad boys. So if I lose one on the rocks around San Diego, no big deal. Now black isn't my favorite color for most things aside from like a big old black worm for largemouth bass, but when it comes to salt water, I don't really fish a ton of black stuff. And that's why I'm glad I also found this, which is totally a salt water looking color of the spade tail. And these are just some actual shads themselves in the pack. Looks like that's almost like a metallic orange with a little black back and yeah. That's gonna be a saltwater catcher. So that is it. Overall, my tackle that I'm bringing is, for me, pretty minimal. And that is by design. I really don't wanna to focus too, too much on the lures this time around. I really wanna focus on the water and try to figure it out and catch a fish or two. 
I've got a couple of travel rods rigged up as well. I've got some apparel and thanks to my buddy Todd. I've got something to keep me warm on the plane. I'll see you guys in San Diego. Well, I just hopped off the plane about a half an hour ago, picked up a rental car, and hit the first patch of water that I could find. We're at a little spot called Harbor Island Park, and it's basically this huge jetty that goes up and down uh, this little body of water in San Diego. It looks like there's a ton of uh, fish catches in this general vicinity. I'm not sure on what kind of lures, but the first thing I'm going to be throwing is my Jensen Shad. I've got it rigged up on this, looks like a quarter ounce uh, head. Switched over to the uh, chrome uh, sort of orange color Shad. We'll see if we can get one. Well, that didn't exactly start out very well. My first cast with my travel rod, and that happened. Uh, <laughs> luckily, I was able to find a tackle shop about five minutes away from where I was fishing uh, called Angler's Choice in San Diego. I think I actually heard of this place for a bass and butt at one point, and definitely when I have more time, I'm gonna have to do a proper walkthrough of that joint, holy mackerel. Uh, it is floor to gills packed with some awesome stuff, but, Really uh, quickly uh, bought myself a uh, Shimano travel rod here, which I'm going to put together <laughs> and hopefully uh, get on one of these bay bass or two. Um, not exactly old school, but hey, what are you going to do? It's already 5:30. I'm not sure how much time I've got till sundown here in California. Probably, I reckon, not too too long. So we're going to get rigged up as quick as we possibly can with this rod. This is a nice rod, by the way. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Literally the first cast, I went back. It might have been cracked on the plane. I hit a rock and the whole thing just shattered like a, like a leg lamp in Christmas Story. Oh my goodness. We're gonna stick with the original bait that I had tied on here. Uh, despite the fact they had a bunch of really fancy swim baits at the old Angler's Choice, uh, I'm gonna keep it old school, at least as far as the the lure is concerned. We good? Oh, we're good. Woo, look at that. It's <laughs> a long rod. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. It's probably not even that long, is it? <laughs> it's a seven footer, that's it. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to break my rod this first cast. I don't think I've ever fished a rod with a plastic still on it. <laughs> this is like embarrassing. So I knew this was gonna be a tough mission. Uh, foreign waters, not a ton of time, broken rod. Um, <laughs> but uh, we'll see, the sun is definitely starting to set. Uh, probably don't have a ton of daylight left. Ah, do I switch baits? You know, um, I did also buy these at Jensen Fish and Tackle. This looks like a traditional Mr. Twister style sassy shad. Uh, I might switch that out. It's getting a little bit darker and I'm not sure how well this guy is showing up. <clears throat> this one's a little bit bigger profile, so I don't know if that's gonna help or hurt, uh, but I'm not doing a ton with the, uh, the old copper shad, so we'll switch it up and see. This was the old swim bait before there were such things as uh, swim baits. They just called them sassy shads. 
uh, pretty sure I've got about a half an hour left of good daylight to fish. Uh, I've been looking up and down this jetty. I do see some interesting, uh, looks like sort of drains or just different stones that are in there. So I'm gonna try to get on down to the water's edge, cast along this area, because it at least looks a little bit different than everything else I've been fishing so far. Well, I didn't exactly expect to be on the bank again today. According to plan, this is gonna be a short little stop in San Diego. I had a little bit of work to do this morning and I was gonna hop on a bird by about one o'clock to head back to Austin. Well, that flight got canceled and now I don't board it until 5 p.m. So I've got a few hours to kill and I figure why not kill it here I'm trying to get a spotty. I am gonna make one little adjustment today and I slept on this a pretty good bit. I'm gonna to try to keep fishing at old school as much as possible, but I think that that jig head I was using was really holding me back for two reasons. Number one, I think it was just too heavy for this shallow of water and I probably could have gotten away with something a little bit closer to three eighths of an ounce instead of a full ounce. In addition to that, it was not weedless. So between the extra weight and not being weedless, I caught a ton of weeds in areas that I think I should be pulling spotties out of, but I think before a fish could jump on it, that thing got weeded up. So I stopped back at Angler's Choice today where I picked up my travel rod and I grabbed some of these. This is a, I think it's called a Phoenix swim head. It's a 3 8 ounce a swim head and notice it's got a nice little weed guard. It is still rigged up with a Jensen shad so I'm keeping true to the concept of getting a old school bait from Texas, bringing it to California to try to catch a bass on the West Coast. Oh, we're gonna work this bank a little bit quicker today. Another thing I'm thinking about changing is I was getting down in the rocks a lot to cast. I was trying to get a further cast. Well, it makes it hard to cover water because you just jump it from rock to rock. It's a little bit uh, treacherous with my weight Reeboks. In addition to that, I'm obviously trying to film this for you guys as well. And moving a tripod around here, you know me, I'm not a chesty kind of guy. That's a little bit problematic. So I might stay up on the bank for a little bit and try to cast out here as best I can. Um, we'll see if I can cover water a little bit quicker. And hopefully with my modified bait, stay out of the weeds and maybe find a spotty. Okay, we got a fish. I thought you were stuck. I too. thought I was stuck too. <laughs> you had a big, fish Look at that. Finally got a spotty. Oh my goodness. I wasn't sure if that was snagged or what he hit and went right under a rock. And he was hiding underneath there for a hot minute. Man, that's a nice little fish. Look at that guy. <laughs> oh wow. Very cool. Uh, no idea how to hold these things. <laughs> So there he is, nice, my first San Diego spotty bass. Oh my goodness, that was a hoot. Uh, I was <laughs> fighting that guy under a rock for a hot minute. Oh my goodness. Let me get this guy unhooked real quick. Uh, fishing with a little swim bait, yeah. <laughs> so there we are, a nice little spotty bass. Check out that dude. That's a nice little fish, isn't it? <laughs> uh, sweet. All right, guys. Well, uh, mission accomplished here in San Diego. We finally got a spotty bass after many hours of fishing. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's let him go. That was like the craziest thing ever. So he hit, uh, I was uh, finishing up a phone call, he hit 
but then went right under a rock and just hid there. And I guess that's what they do here. So this line is just shredded. Uh, luckily, I was able to get him in. I'm a little bit surprised. I'll probably retie and see if there's any more spotties right up in here. That was pretty wild, man. Well, we are late in the day. I have got to get to the airport and hop on a plane. So we're gonna wrap up the video now. I definitely don't want to be accused of being a spot burner, so I'll make sure that I don't stand near any landmarks so that you know the viewers don't know exactly where I was fishing today. All in all, that's a pretty cool day. I will definitely be heading back to Austin with my head held high that we were able to catch a fish that I've never caught before on a bait that probably is, what, 40, 50 years old at this point. It was a little bit of a mix of a Jensen fishing tackle shad as well as a new, well, not so new anymore, weedless swim bait head. Hopefully I'll be back in San Diego pretty soon. You better believe that when I come, I'm 100% gonna be bringing my new travel rod. See y'all next weekend, but until then, keep the carpet side up, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.